people are so accustomed now to Google that even though you might be advertising your domain name, I might be advertising n5r.com, go to n5r.com, they don't go to n5r.com. Here's what they do. They go to Google and they type in n5r. <laughs> okay, and we've seen this. Statistically, 80% of people now don't go to your site directly. They go to Google, they type in your name, and that's how they find you. So here's why this is so important for you. All of, your comp all of us have competition, right? you need to register all your competitors' names. So if your competition is XYZ, when they go to Google, type XYZ, your competitor, boom, you gotta be on the top of the page. So now you're gonna pull all of your customers' leads. So your, 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 your competition is spending a million dollars a year. You can leverage that million dollars a year just by being on Google because they're probably not smart enough to be there. So you need to be on the top of Google with their name, okay? This is huge. So now you're leveraging not just your marketing budget, you're leveraging all of your competitors' marketing budgets just by registering their domain name on the top, okay? And I'll tell you why it works. I was looking for a marketing guru to help us on some copywriting. And everyone said, Dan Kennedy's the best. Dan Kennedy's the best. So I go to Google. I type in Dan Kennedy. And, of course, his website's on top. But guess what I saw like the other nine? Um, we are cheaper than Dan Kennedy. Dan Kennedy sucks. Um, if you can't afford Dan Kennedy, you know, click here. It's like all of his competitor, and it was brilliant. So I end up going to like the number two guy. I'm like, well, let me talk to, the, 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 you know, this. It's so powerful, this stuff, okay? But if you haven't thought about, if you haven't written out all your competitors' names and done this, then you're missing a massive opportunity, okay? Because Dan Kennedy has done such an amazing job to bring all these people, but look at all the people sucking off of Dan Kennedy's leads. It's incredible. One third of all the real estate in Manhattan this year was sold to international buyers. One in three. So if you're a Manhattan broker and you didn't do anything internationally, you're retarded. Because you just missed 33% of all of the sales in that city. Okay? So think about that. Now, Toronto's a pretty international city. <laughs> we probably have more, more people coming <coughs> in this city than, than any other city in the world. So... So what are you going to do? I'm not suggesting that you run ads in Pakistan. Okay, I'm not suggesting you run ads in India, you run ads in China. But if you leverage Google and you start thinking about, okay, well, if somebody's coming from the UK or they're coming from Germany or they're coming from, maybe there are certain keywords I can use to leverage the German buyer or the UK buyer or the Irish buyer because they're coming, okay, and they're buying here or from Israel. So the Google is the most effective way for you to tap this international audience. And if you think about Google, even as we sleep, okay, they're doing, there's a billion searches per minute. They're happening internationally. Outside of, outside of North America, there's a billion searches a minute happening on Google. So Google is not an American phenomenon. This is a global phenomenon. So if you want to start tapping into some of this European, international, Chinese, all these investment communities, Google is your best source to do that. Let me tell you the marketing trends, all right? I'd like to use my wife as, a, as an example. She's a better example because a guy that travels all the time is not a good example of this, but, but a normal person that sits you know, pretty much in, in one city most of the time is a better example. My wife reads all of her news online, okay? Let me tell you how important this is. She knows everything I find out a day before I do, okay? Because I still read newspapers, and I'm always a day behind she does not just read her local papers. She reads, like, we have, we have a place in Florida, a place here. She knows all the, the, the local stuff in St. Augustine, Jackson, all the stuff. In her. She has better, she knows everything that's going on a day before I do. All of her banking is done online. She, all of her bill paying, all of her visa. I have to wait a month to get my statements. She has statements in real time, okay? She is more connected with her friends and her family than anybody. She's on Facebook and all these social networking sites. So I get to see my friends every couple months. I might call them if I get lucky once a month, if I'm lucky once a month. She's in constant contact with her social sphere daily, hourly, okay? If you look at her life, it's completely digital. Everything she does from her her mom, which she does video Skype with every single day, and any, anyone that knows grandparents, they're doing video Skype with their grandkids. They're, so I don't care if they're 65. They know how to use video Skype. If you don't know how to use video Skype and you're trying to sell, it's back to the retarded theme. And I'll tell you why. It's the video Skype is one of the most powerful sales tools that no one no one's using. My point is, my wife's 35 years old, and I'm not saying everyone is connected as she is, but everyone's pretty close. Okay. The only thing she's not using is RSS feeds. I mean, other than that, she's, she's connected. I would suggest to you 
that you need to think of your customer that way. It's all online all the time. Now, I'm not saying you don't, we don't still do letters. Yes, as a matter of fact, there's some tools that, that you can use. We'll talk about handwritten thank you cards that freak people out. Um, when, I, when I'm in a sales environment and I do a thank you card, I will come back to that person three years later. My thank you card is still on their desk three years later. Not because it was me, because they hadn't, hadn't got a thank you card in three years. So they keep it on their desk. Be so I'm not saying that everything we'll talk about today is, is new world stuff, but these tools are very important. If you're designing emails and you're not thinking about a BlackBerry user, it's a serious problem. Because especially in the commercial side, most people are carrying Blackberries. So if you don't have a text version of your email, it's a serious problem. You don't want to look that HTML jumble. So these things are really important. So again, I can't stress this internet stuff enough because most of your marketing is not, is not using it. So I think it's, it's the big opportunity.